OK, so we need to add the library. We need to add the feature. We need to add the operating system. And which way? Well, simply Alt O or go to software pack, select components here on the top bar. A pop up will appear. You have here all of the STX cube, so uh, a list of the expansion package for STM32 open development environment. Some of them, some of them will be in black. It means that you have on your PC. Some of them will be in gray. It means that you can add it. You can include it. We are going to use with the Azure Ertos H7 yeah, that you should be already installed. Version 2.0.0, the latest update. Uh, you can see here all of the components that Paolo showed you on the first part of this session. Uh, you can see the FileX, the LevelX, uh, the USBX, the NetX Duo. All of them will are built on top of the operating system, and the operating system is the first line, so the Arthos 3DX. Uh, four check buttons are available. In the second uh, session, we will uh, take a look at the other one. By now, we will only include the core feature, so only the operating system itself. So let's click on core and then select OK. You will notice here on the center part of the, of the screen here that a new line will appear called software packs. Click on software packs, select the only available feature we included, the STM32 Xcube Azure Atos H7. And after that, you can see that the center part will uh, be refreshed with the feature related to this software pack just added. The only component is the Artos Threadex because uh, via software pack select component we added, but now we need to enable it. So let's click on Artos Threadex and let's enable it. You will see that the bottom part of this table will be updated and three tab will appear the first tab is about the configuration of the azure tos itself and mainly by now for the memory configuration with the azure tos tradex you can both work in a static way or in a dynamic way the selection between static and dynamic memory is totally under your control. And this is uh, totally depending on your strategy for your application. There are some cases where you prefer to work uh, in a static way, other cases when you prefer to work in a dynamic way. This is mostly related to the amount of RAM that you have selected for your STM32. If static memory is, elect, is selected, the, the, all of the memory is added uh, inside the, the, the task stack at compiled time, let's say. On the other side, working in a dynamic way with uh, the dynamic memory, the memory is uh, reserved, let's say, allocated and freed at run time. And all of this RAM is not belonging to the task stack. It's outside the task stack, beginning at the first free location, obviously. Uh, working this way, you need to add some, uh, apply some change, let's say change the, the RAM linker file, and you, you need to work uh, with, starting again with the first free location, and you have a pointer inside the source code I will show you later, dealing with the first free location. Obviously, uh, you have advantages and disadvantages working with a static or dynamic way. The most important drawback working with the, the dynamic memory is the fragmentation. Because if you are going to allocate in free multiple times, several times during the lifetime of your project, you will probably reach a point where you will no more be able to allocate some RAM. This is called fragmentation. 
and uh, this is a typical issue working with the dynamic RAM. For this morning session, for this uh, demo, we are going to use the most simple one, so the static memory allocation, dealing with 1K memory pool size. So static memory, 1K inside. So there will be a big buffer, let's say, 1K inside, inside the stack of the task. The second tab is about the Thredex, and uh, this is simply a huge list of uh, features that you can enable. Let's try to increase the size. Okay, you can here lead a list. Everything is disabled, everything, except uh, there is, a, this, okay, <laughs> there is the disable preemption that is enabled. You will deal with it uh, in the next session with Manuel when he will show you what is a priority and what is a preemption. I only want here to focus on one configuration, one uh, feature that is the ticks per second. Ticks per second equal to 100. It means that every second you will get 100 interrupt from the system tick. It means that the time slice related to every task is 10 milliseconds. This is important because uh, after that we will replace the all delay function with the OS sleep function. The all delay took millisecond, the OS sleep will take tick. So one tick is 10 milliseconds. Is it possible to change the default one, 100, obviously, but uh, let's say it's not recommended. I mean, having a show an higher number it means you will have a shorter tick and having a shorter tick uh, it means that you will have a faster uh, a more frequent let's say uh, content switch from one task to another and this is uh, really not recommended also because uh, uh, the higher is the amount uh, of value passed to the delay function, to the sleep function, to the timer function and so on, the higher is the number, the less accurate will be the resulting, depending on the uh, increased or decreased value of this tick. So let's stay with the, with the default one, with the 100. This is the minimum uh, quantity, the, the, um, the minimum list of the feature to have uh, a working operating system. You saw that we did not enable anything. Let's stay with the default one. Okay, the other one is empty. I mean, the user constant, you can define uh, your own uh, preferred uh, macro if you want to add uh, some define or whatever to the source code. Okay, let's go to, ge to generate the project. So all of the content of this tab, of this core Thredex configuration will be reflected as it is inside the Thredex underscore user dot H file. We will see now. To generate the project, simply save it using the floppy disk uh, image or type control K or cl click on the gear uh, button here. You can see where I have the mouse. A pop-up will appear. You want to generate the code, click yes, obviously, and take a look what will happen on the left side, where there is the Project Explorer. Ah, okay, yes, this is correct. Uh, you will get a warning. Do you want to generate the code? No. Click no, please. The warning told you that since you are now going to use an operating system and the operating system need a time base the selected time base for the operating system is the system tick but in the previous uh, part of this training with the bare metal implementation the system tick was used by the al by the hardware abstraction layer by the driver to create the delay so we need now to select another time base for the hil so let's come back to the ioc file Let's go to the system core part, so on category system core, and click on sys, SYS system. The only available option here is the time based source. Let's move from the system tick, that's I repeat, is the default one selected uh, by the operating system, to a basic timer. 
to a timer with a low resolution because you don't need so much accuracy to perform uh, this kind of uh, simple counter. Select timer six, for example. But you can select uh, whatever timer you, you like. I select the timer six because I repeat it's basic. If you want to take a look at the list of timer and take a look at the, which kind of timer it is, you can click on uh, timer section here on the left and go with the mouse without pressing any button. Uh, let's uh, uh, go with the mouse uh, over one timer and a pop-up will appear showing you that is a general purpose timer or is an advanced uh, basic timer or is uh, an advanced timer in case of uh, timer one or a low power one in case of the LP timer five or four and so on. So let's use a, a basic one, so timer six. Now it's really the case to create the project, to generate. Take a look again what will happen here on the left side. So select, uh, press Ctrl S or Ctrl K. Do you want to generate the, the code? Yes. This is now the case. It will again take us a while because uh, the operating system will be now included. OK, on the left part you have now another folder called Mildware. Inside the Mildware, you will have the ST, the ZX, and the, inside the common subfolder, you will have the list source. You will have the list of feature of the operating system. Every feature is on a dedicated and uh, ad hoc file .c. You will have a uh, task create, task uh, delete, uh, queue send, queue receive, mutex, block pool, etc. Et Another folder is the Azure Ertos. Here you will have the configuration of the Azure. Go outside, go below, you will see, for example, the stack that we allocated, the basic one, that is 1K in size. If you remember when we discussed about the dynamic memory allocation, I told you that you need to pass to your allocation, to your allocator, a pointer to the first free memory. And this is the pointer, memory pointer here. It's unused here, but this is the way it works. So let's say with the static one. And uh, let's go on. The most important in the end, uh, the file that will go to replace the main.c is the app underscore tradix.c. Let's open it. You will have here all of the code related to your application. Let's come back for one second to the main.c file. You can see that the domain did not change in your code because you put your code in between uh, the begin and the while directive. But now there is on line 124 the startup of the uh, operating system, the startup of the kernel in the end. It means that everything after this instruction, included the while one, uh, the all delay and so on, will never be executed. So this loop will never be reached. Since the thread, the that function on the main.c we just saw will never, is not re-entered, so it will never come back from this function. The main.c you can now ignore and put all of the overload your code inside the app underscore threadx underscore init function we saw below. Uh, it's important to say that generally speaking, uh, talking about the operating system, potentially all of the function can uh, succeed or fail. It's very important to pay attention to the return value. So after every call to your function related to the operating system, from the thread creation to the semaphore, uh, uh, get, put, and so on, always be sure to check what is going to happen so you can avoid potential uh, issue. So always check the true-false of the, the resulting of the function. So let's come back to the source code. Let's go to the app.redx.c file. I will use again the, the cheat sheet to create, to, to, to copy paste the source code. So the first line is the 
I'm at slide 37 for your information. First line there's defined trade stack sites. Let's move it to line 36 between uh, again between end between begin and end of private define user code. Second and third line of code at line 47. Copy paste again. It's inside the private variables. Again, between uh, begin and end. Two lines here. The first one is the thread stack. And the second one is the thread uh, sides, let's say. Uh, thread stack with uh, stack sides, 1K in sides. Um, the second uh, the second uh, variable is the thread pointer because every components of the operating system from thread to semaphore queue mute etc have an handler when you declare it you will have a way to work with it to start to stop to change the priority to send a message to to receive a message uh, to take the mute and so on you always will have an handler a pointer to the resource. Now, what we need? We need the the prototype, basically the function that will be called by our task. And you, after the inside the creation of the task, we will pass a pointer to this function. So, line 52, we have the thread entry with this initial input. So, with this with this parameter even if we will not use it. I'm at slide 38. We need to create the task, obviously. So let's add the function thread x thread create to around the line 70. So inside the app thread x init between uh, begin and end of the thread x init, let's paste the thread creation function. Uh, you will see first parameter is the handler we declared before. The second parameter is the name. You can use uh, any name you, you like. Mm, no restriction about the sides, uh, no rules about it. You can type whatever you want. Third parameter, third and four are related to the function that will be used for the, the thread itself. The function that will uh, include the while one, the while true loop, and that will be executed by the scheduler, will be called by the scheduler every time there is a contest switch. After that, you have the memory, so the stack and the size of the task. Other parameters are the priority and the preemption priority of the task. The one parameter is the time slice. Time slice is uh, how many tick uh, a thread can stay in execution without be, uh, let's say, preempted by the scheduler. It's not recommended using it uh, with a value higher than one when you will work with an operating system. So if you are going to work with an operating system, with an operating system, just use the priority and the preemption priority. The time slice is used basically when you want to implement a round robin scheme. So all tasks have no priorities. Uh, all of them can stay in execution for the same amount of time, the time slice in tick. So one time slice is uh, 10 milliseconds here. Using the round robin scheme, the scaler select, simply select the task to be executed uh, simply based on the arrival all, arrival order inside the, the, the ready list. And the process will move on uh, this way in a circular way. This is called the round robin. But again, here the, the indication is, is uh, ignore the wine, ignore the one, ignore the time slice, use it uh, with one parameter always and simply focus on the priority and preemption. The last parameter is the auto start. It means that after the task creation at the beginning, the kernel will uh, start the, with the execution of this task. 
the option, the other option is to avoid the auto start and simply use the, the thread pointer to enable it. So to turn on this task at runtime, for example, calling the, the start from another task, basically. The last step we need, slide 39, is the function of the module to be executed. So let's copy the, the main thread entry function, the body, and add it at the, at the end of this task, of this file, again between the begin and the end. Let's copy. You can see here that you have the same behavior. So HAL GPIO toggle with the same pin and the slip function. You will not going to use the millisecond here, but you are going to use the number of tick. So 20 tick, 10 millisecond each is 200 millisecond. So 400 millisecond period. 200 uh, for the uptime and 200 for the downtime. OK, we have done. You need uh, simply also to add the inclusion of the main.h file to take advantage of the HIA library and of the macro led underscore green GPIO port uh, and pin in place of PB0. So let's go uh, at the beginning at line 26 here inside the include section and include main.h file. OK, we have done. Now we need simply to save. And after that, control B to build or the hammer. Again, this is the first time to the operating system file will be uh, will be compiled and this will take a while. OK, we have done. So again, let's go in the bug mode. So click on the. Click on the bug. And let's go to debug the lead underscore toggle underscore uh, lead underscore toggle project. This allow the target, the estimator two H7 to be uh, erased and flashed. OK. Again, the code stuck the, at the beginning. To allow the execution and see the lead toggling, click on the resume button, F8. And you will see, hopefully, <laughs> the lead toggling with a higher rate, uh, a higher speed. Compliment, <laughs> you flashed your first uh, project based on the Microsoft Azure Ertos. Uh, finally, let's go to uh, to see what is going to happen at task level. So let's stop the execution, clicking on the suspend button. OK, and you will see that the code block inside the thread schedule dot S. This is an assembler file and this is uh, basically the, the scheduler. Uh, because we are we have only one task and this task is uh, mostly pretty always in a sleep mode. You can see here that the scheduler is simply in the in the wait state. To take a look at it, let's go also to Windows. Button. Show view. Threadx. Thread list. And you can see here that your task is in sleep. You will see later with Manuel uh, the, the reason behind it. I can already tell you that your task is uh, 20 tick, so 200 millisecond in sleep and only five microsecond in run mode. So 90, 97%, 98% of the time is always in sleep. To see it run mode, there is only one way. So let's go to our code and add a breakpoint to the toggle pin function. So line 98. Double click on the on the blue bar on the left where I have the mouse. Double click and you will find that a small circle will appear. The small circle, it means that there is now a breakpoint and the execution 
will stop once the code reached this point. Let's click again on the resume button. And the code will stop here. Now let's go back to that view, to that thread list. And you can see that now the thread is really running. So we were able to stop the point, to stop the execution within the five microsecond the the HAL toggle pin, the HAL GPL toggle pin is executing. The very last uh, point I want to highlight is about the stake usage. You will see here in this list that you have your name, you have your priority, you have the state, you have the run count, you have the indication about the stack start point and end point with these sites, and you have the step pointer. You will see here the stack usage that is disabled by default. To enable it and to take a look at what is going on, click on the three horizontal bar here on the toggle stack checking button. Click it and you will see that the stack usage will appear. Stack usage 300 uh, something upon stack size 1000. It means that we are working in a static way. We reserved 1K, we are only used 300, so we are, let's say, wasting some memory. So 700 bytes we reserved are really not used. This is the reason why when you work with it in a static way, you need to really pay attention to the amount of RAM you are giving to each task. To avoid this kind of situation when you take reserve a lot of RAM, but in the end you are not using it really. Or on the opposite side, you are reserving 1K RAM, for example, but your task will require more than this and you risk to reach uh, a point that uh, where you will get some kind of uh, stack overflow let's say okay we have uh, we have done hope you are linked with my uh, execution we can come back to where we where we left off and uh... I got a question in the meantime, uh, if it would have been possible to come back to actually the, the section uh, in which we, we, are, we are showing uh, the two threads running and uh, the thread list. So let's say that now we will restart the debug, OK? I'm doing a step back. We restart the debug. Our thread is uh, already initialized. I'm going in upthread.c. Normally, if you enable the thread list, thread x thread list, you have to click here, or if you don't have it already here, you have to go on Windows, show view, thread x, thread x list. And uh, a view like this one will pop up. So normally, if you start the execution for a few seconds and you stop, you finish in the scheduler and the thread uh, is shown as uh, sleep. This is happening uh, because, uh, you know, the uh, normal toggling operation, so the HAL GPIO toggle is actually going to take uh, just a few uh, microseconds, so you are not going to see it. You really have to stop in that microsecond, which will be difficult. Um, so to be able to see the thread running, uh, you shall put a breakpoint at the line, in this case for me it's line 98, uh, so it should uh, be at the same line of HAL GPO toggle pin. You can click behind uh, on the left of the line. Uh, at this stage you uh, can resume the execution, so it's in a while one, so we always finish there. And when we click back to thread list, uh, you see that your arrow is there, so it means that uh, you are currently debugging this extraction. You are inside the thread body, uh, so uh, the thread state now is running. Maybe you can write us uh, in the chat if you if you got to the straight to the point, because if so, uh, I can uh, actually start with the step number two. 
which will be activating the tracing features with TraceX. Trace